Jeff was awesome. They wanted to come back next year. I really enjoyed it. It was excellent. Uh, I'd have you back for any one of our uh, presentations. Thanks, Jeff. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited for you. Because this is going to be a very good time. We are going to focus, folks, on leadership, or as I like to call it, bending others to your will. Hello and welcome to Unleash Your Inner Tyrant, the most entertaining leadership presentation you are ever going to see. How can I make that promise? Because every other leadership presentation you've ever seen focuses exclusively on what you should do. And I'm going to do that too. But I'm also going to spend a whole lot of time talking about all of the things you shouldn't do, which ends up being a lot more fun. Unleash Your Inner Tyrant will give your attendees all the takeaways of a more traditional presentation with all the entertainment value of a comedy show. I've done it this way because I believe that improving your leadership skills doesn't have to be boring, and I want people to actually enjoy the process of becoming better leaders. Well, I'm not here to give you advice. You've had enough of it. I am gonna give you permission to act exactly the way that I know you want to act. Because history, history doesn't remember the good leaders. We don't remember the benevolent people. It's the dictators. It's the tyrants that we never forget. So I'm gonna help you unleash your inner tyrant that is right. Would you like the people you work with to scamper down alternate hallways when they see you coming? <laughs> I know that you've probably heard of the supposed advantages that come from knowing your people, uh, the benefits that accrue from spending time with them. Maybe you know that Herb Kelleher, for example, Southwest's longtime CEO, was famous for occasionally throwing bags on the tarmac with the entry-level Southwest baggage handlers. And in 1994, his employees spent $60,000 of their own money to take out a full-page ad in USA Today to thank him on Boss's Day for, among other things, remembering all of their names. That is embarrassing. You don't have to write anything down today, but if you did, one sentence I want you to take away from today, it's this one. Other people are annoying. <laughs> That's why we live in separate homes. <laughs> I know some of you are not on board. I can hear you. You're thinking, that doesn't sound like what I've read. And I know you haven't. You've read the wrong books. You've read The Speed of Trust and The Power of Trust and The Trust of Trust and you've been told it's a good thing. And if you have, you've seen this quote by Theodore Roosevelt. It's in pretty much every management book in the last 50 years. The best executive is one who has sense enough to pick good people to do what he wants done and self-restraint enough to keep from meddling with them while they do it. Now, obviously, Teddy trusted the people that worked for him. And let's look at what happened to him. Most people focus on the fact that he's usually considered one of our country's five best presidents. But uh, I don't think that's a very big deal. What I do think is a big deal, and there's no disputing this, he got the crappiest spot on Mount Rushmore. <laughs> Look at him. He's right in the divot there. Most people forgot that that's him. Is that how you want to go out? Do you want to be the big head next to the better heads? I don't think so. I can honestly say that I've never worked with an easier speaker setting this thing up. He did his homework, he learned our audience and a little bit of background about them, and he brought the house down. Serious moment now, a billion different ways of how to be mean to people. There are a trillion ways that we do this. There are a trillion things that bad bosses and bad team players do uh, to make themselves into bad team players. And I, I, I just shared several of them. I want to just summarize this whole section, though, by asking you one question that I've already asked you once that I want you to think about, because I'm going to flip it on you in just a second to make a point. When was the last time one of your employees or your colleagues directly contradicted you, said specifically that one of your ideas was wrong or misguided or could be improved? My guess is that your answer to that question is slightly different from your answer to this question. When was the last time your spouse directly contradicted you? <laughs> you don't need to tell me, because it was today. <laughs> I don't know you, I don't know your marriage, but I know it'd be better if your spouse didn't have a brain. <laughs> you know why your spouse never stops annoying you with their stupid little thoughts? You know why? It's because they don't fear you. You know, 
They don't, you know, our relationship with our spouse, with our children, it's equal. The communication back and forth is equal, and it has to be if you want it to be a healthy relationship over the course of time. The rules that govern our personal relationships are the same rules that need to be governing our professional relationships. Now, I'm not saying you're going to have the same kind of relationship. Obviously, you're not. What I'm saying is the rules that build, strengthen, and sustain relationships, uh, active listening, mutual respect, paying attention to your tone of voice, being open-minded having an open door policy. Those are exactly the same, whether you're talking about dealing with your kids, your spouse, your friends, your family, your colleagues, your bosses, or your employees. Absolutely fantastic. Charged, energized, and was absolutely entertaining. Most leadership conversations talk about leadership like this. There's a collection of things that you can do that make you a good leader. There's a different collection of things that you could do that would make you a bad leader. But I think it's a little bit more nuanced. There are actually two pieces of effective leadership, basically good leadership and great leadership for lack of a better term. Good leadership focuses on issues of human connection. And this is what the overwhelming majority of leadership discussion talks about, making people feel valued and respected. But great leadership, which does not get as much time and attention because there's not as much to say in there, talks about mission, vision, and purpose. It's the communication that we do to let people know how important what our, our job is and how important I specifically am in making sure that happens. And I think a lot of times we forget to focus on the mission of the company. Company, and we spend too much time trying to make people feel good about themselves and not enough time making them feel important. We need to be doing both of these things if we want engaged employees. So it's possible that you are familiar with the work of John Gottman, a psychology professor from the University of Washington, who in 1995 published this book, Why Marriages Succeed or Fail. Very uh, seminal book in the world of relationship psychology. In this book, he argues that the ideal ratio of positive to negative communication is approximately five to one. In other words, for every critical, demeaning, constructive, or otherwise imperfect thing you're gonna say to somebody, you will eventually need to say five nice things to make up for it. Which means that a good leader might have a constructively critical conversation with a colleague or a subordinate along these lines. Excellent work on the Parker Project. You met your deadline, you came in at budget, and your presentation skills are really improving. Next time, though, I need you to tell me what's happening as it's happening. I didn't always know what was going on that was an issue for me, so please focus on that for next time. But overall, you did a very good job. You can see the five to one ratio here. You heard the criticism, but it doesn't feel too heavy. It almost sounds like an honest attempt to help somebody improve some particular element of their business. And that is not what I want you to do. What I want you to do is the compliment sandwich. This is a lot of fun, and I want you to see how much fun this can be. So I'd like you to turn to the person you're sitting next to. This will be very painless, I promise. Do it, turn to them. Look them right in the eyes and repeat after me. You look great today. I hate you and wish we'd never met. I like your shoes. Okay. Which one of those was the most fun? Which one are you gonna remember? The criticism! And then some of you will remember the shoes too. But the criticism! <laughs>